Hello, this is A.G. Bailey, and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy IV Pixel. Let's head on into the Sealed Cavern to pick up, well, the Crystal of Darkness before Golbez does. Though why he doesn't just teleport in to get the Crystal like the last time, I don't know. Can we even teleport in? No, we can't. Okay, I guess that's why. Well, we can use Warp, but that's about it. So let's see, to the left there is just a dead end. It's not like an invisible bridge or anything like that. And one thing throughout this cave you'll find are a whole bunch of these ropes that you can descend or climb to get from one platform to the other. So we can fight monsters like evil bats. These guys are weak to fire and projectiles. So I think my... Uh, Weapon of choice would be a freak on these guys. You could also use Edge's Flame Magic on them, though I don't think that would be strong enough to kill these guys. Eh, it might be. But in any case, yeah, that's just the easiest way of dealing with them. Hey, hey, high potion, nice. Okay, so let's see. Oh yeah, with Edge, I should put him back on his previous weapons. Don't need boomerangs right now. Let's see, with Cecil's equipment, if you don't have all this specialty equipment, don't worry about it. It's not that critical. You could just give him full diamond gear and you'd be fine. It's just slightly better doing it this way. So that we can fight a monster to get into this room. The trap door itself. So there's a few ways that you can deal with this guy. Let's see what we can do there on that mark. Let's see. Trapdoors have 5,000 HP. And... Okay, so that's the brute force method for killing the trapdoor before they can kill whoever they were targeting there. And for defeating them, we learned smoke! Which is completely pointless in this version of the game because we don't drop money for running from battles, but otherwise I guess it could be useful, but you could run away manually just as fast anyway. But, uh, okay, so we got, yeah, defeat the trap door, we get into the room to pick up a Kotetsu upgrade for Edge there. So this is one of the reasons why I like coming here before the side quest dungeons now, as opposed to my previous LPs, because the equipment progression is much smoother going here first than going to the side quest areas where you'd get some even more powerful stuff. Not to mention the enemies here are a lot easier too. Like these guys! Let's see. Well, once again, go with a freak there. And in the back, we've got Miss Vamp, who is, well, not only undead, but also considered a mage-type enemy. So mute arrows are going to be really powerful against her. You could also, like, cast Kiraja on her, being undead, or use flame, or holy elemental weapons. If she's alone, she'll cast Vampire, or whatever the HP draining ability is called. So, yeah, you could deal with that, but it's, well, not a big deal. Just use a freak, and you're good to go. But yeah, there's some other reasons why I want to come to this dungeon now, but they are plot spoilers, so I will just wait on that until they happen. Now, in this version of the game, whenever you get to a rope, you still have to press up or down to pass across it there. But in other versions of the game, when you just step, like, even right here, you'll automatically go up or down the rope. So you want to watch out for that if you're trying to avoid using the rope for whatever reason. Here we got another new enemy, Screamers, who, for some reason, are considered giant-type enemies. So... The Ogre Killer is really good against them. They're also considered machine-type enemies for some reason. It's so, like you could use the Thunderclaw against them or the Fairy Claw. 
things like that to exploit their creature type there. You could cast Toad on them if you really wanted to nerf them, but I didn't feel that was necessary. But, uh, okay, so... I'm just thinking here. Let me show you another way that you could deal with the trapdoors there. This might be more pertinent in the Super Nintendo version of the game. Hopefully you've gotten Rosa up to level 34 to learn Reflect. So the trapdoor will target someone, cast Reflect on them. And that happens! Yeah, I love the spell animation on that in this version of the game. And the sound effect. Pure gold. But yeah, that's another easy way of dealing with them. Just let them instant death themselves. Let's see, I don't think there's anything else on that floor. Let's see, with these rooms, I'm going to try and show a different way of defeating them as well. Let's see, I want, yeah, Mithril Staff. Let's see, why don't I give you the Dancing Dagger, just in case. I don't think I'll need it, but we'll see how much damage I deal against another monster. Now, there is a thing with trap doors, is if you drop their HP low enough without killing them, then you have a chance to spawn some other monster. So what I'm trying to do is just whittle them down on their HP a little bit. Uh, if I can get the Dancing Dagger going there, that would help. And there you go. And then with this guy, just go Cockatrice. It's the easiest way to go. Boom, they're dead. Hooray! So that is actually one of two monsters that could potentially spawn from a trap door. The way it works is you gotta get them below 700 HP and that'll spawn the monster. But in this version of the game, that's not automatic. You still have to whack them upside the head to trigger, potentially trigger their spawn condition. But that doesn't always happen. I think there's like a random chance of it happening in this version of the game. It's much more consistent in previous 2D versions. But in any case, we finally learn our first tier 3 spell for Rydia, Blizzaga! That'll be pretty useful for the remainder of the game. And for defeating the trapdoor, we get nothing in this room. So yes, a lot of them are going to be empty rooms, but I'm going to fight them all anyway. If only for the experience. Now, there is a second monster that we can find behind a trapdoor. If I can find him here, great. If not, I'll just edit out trapdoor battles until I do find one that has them. Alright, that was the same one as before, the Chimera Brain. And by the way, if you don't have Cockatrice, uh, you could just use the Bio spell. That would deal a lot of damage to them, too. Just like the Chimeras we fought before, these guys absorb fire, ice, and lightning elemental magic damage. So you want to watch out for that. They're also strong against elemental weapon damage, but that only cuts the damage in half. And by the way, don't go down the ropes that don't have a platform on the other side of it. What does happen if you do that? We get to fight these guys! Another new enemy! And I could have fought these guys uh, earlier at the three-step peninsula. They could have been, or spawned, in one of those mystery eggs. But I figured I didn't need to go out of my way to find them because we can just randomly encounter them here and get a poison arrow that I'll never use. Yeah, let's see what happens when you go down one of these. Ah, oh, okay. Same thing as the other versions. Yeah, you don't fall or die or anything like that. Okay, so now we're going to have a whole bunch of trap doors to open up. So let's just take them out one at a time. We still got... Okay, yeah, still got those good weapons for dealing with these guys. Alright, took care of that guy. To get nothing out of it. Oh, well. 
Let's try door number two. Oh, wow. Edge got a massive hit on the trap door that actually killed it. Usually, he doesn't deal that kind of damage. But for defeating them, we get the Light Sword, which would be worthless if you went to the side quest dungeons first. But for us now, it is really, really good. So it's, yeah, it's a lot more powerful than the Ogre Killer. And it even boosts your strength a little bit. And it's wholly elemental. So that's pretty nice. That'll be really useful going through the rest of this place. But all right, let's try door number three. There's the other enemy I'm looking for, the Yellow Dragon, who is also susceptible to cockatrice there. If not, you know, use, uh, what is that, uh, cast bio on them. You could also use Rose's Hold spell or Edge's Pin spell to paralyze them. But yeah, uh, I could have also encountered them back at the three-step peninsula, but they're like an ultra-rare encounter there. Where did I, uh... I do have sirens, don't I? Ah, oh, there they are. Yeah. So I could have summoned them by using a siren at the three-step peninsula, but I figured I might have a chance to get it here so that I don't have to waste a siren doing that. But, all right, so we got all that out of the way. That'll make getting through the other trap doors a lot easier. So now I don't have to pull my punches when I'm... Uh, what is that? Yeah, when I'm fighting them, I can just go all out. So I might as well get you back on your mute arrows. Those are still really good around here. Okay, I thought there was... Oh, no, R Rydia always had the Rod of Change. I was thinking I equipped her with something else, but, uh, no, no. Well, this one isn't empty either. Ooh, a Fuma Shuriken. That's a really powerful throwing weapon for Edge. I would recommend holding on to it until later. I might need them later. I can't just use them. You never know. But otherwise, yeah, we can deal with these guys easily enough. Fast forward! They don't even have that much HP, though. Edge sometimes has a hard time killing them with flame there. Let's see, Rydia's. Yeah, her MP's getting a bit light there. But we do have a uh, save point coming up here. Eventually. Uh, let me see here. Oh. Right, right. I already equipped that. Okay. Never mind, then. And, you know what? I'm just gonna kill all the remaining trapdoors. Well, now I might run into a battle or something on the way. I'll just fight them one by one. I was thinking of fighting them all at once. Alright, and for defeating them, we get nothing! You lose! Good day, sir! Well, it looks like Rydia ran out of MP just in time. Whoa, yeah, we... <laughs> that was closer than I would have liked it to be. If you're having trouble killing the trap doors, or you don't have Reflect or something yet, you might want to bring, like, some extra Phoenix Downs. Although Rosa could just revive them with the life spell, but... Wait, how much does that cost? Hmm, that didn't cost as much as I would have thought. Yeah, Reflect costs uh, a lot more than that, but it is a guarantee. So, 
Whatever you prefer. Alright, and after defeating that trapdoor, we learned Mirage, which is actually a really good spell for him. It basically, it's essentially Blink, but it only works on himself there. Let's see, so yeah, and it's a little cheaper there, I suppose, but yeah, I mean, it's basically the same thing, and it's really good for Edge, because a lot of times I want him in the front row, but he would take a beating with such low defense, and evasion, well, his evasion's pretty good, but not a guarantee, so uh, Mirage and Blink are a guarantee for the next two physical hits you would have otherwise suffered. Here we got a couple new things for Edge here. Let's see. Dual Katetsu Katanas. Very nice. Let me see how our agility is looking there. Okay, so... Okay, no one's going to get another attack multiplier. But if you had one that was, like, within three of a multiple of 16, then I would give them the... Black Cow, because it would give them another attack multiplier. But in this case, it doesn't really matter. Let's see. Well, we get better evasion. That would be good for you. But yeah, it also boosts your strength and stamina a bit. And it makes you immune to sleep, though that's not really that useful. Not many enemies can inflict that. You could go back and save if you wanted, though. But I don't need to. But I do need to fight these guys! And unfortunately, really is casting is still pretty slow there. Something that I, I think I mentioned it way earlier in the LP, but uh, something that I only learned relatively recently, like a few months ago, was that your agility stat affects your charge time on spells. So I suppose I could give that Black Call to Rydia, but just a few points of agility not going to make that big of a difference. What will make a difference is going through this door. And continuing to the end. Let's see, I think I've... Yeah, I've encountered all the uh, new enemies in the dungeon already. Didn't even have to go out of my way to do it. But I do need to go out of my way to kill these guys and get to my Ifrit summon. You know, I could equip Kane with the old Fire Lance, though that's not extraordinarily important. Cecil could probably one-shot them. Not bad. Not bad. I like having the matching katanas on edge there. It's the only time I'm going to have matching katanas for him. Alright, and after defeating that trapdoor, we learned a new spell for Rydia, Fyraga! And that'll also have quite a bit of use as well. They're even stronger than Bio, I think, but they're elemental, so... But, uh, yeah, defeating that trapdoor was... Only good for the experience. Actually, is this one a trapdoor? No, apparently not. Since we just got out of it. And we can take out these guys easily enough. Although they will take forever to use Blood Feast on you. At least we can fast forward now in the Super Nintendo version. Holy cow, that can uh, that can take a while. I suppose if you've still got that sleep blade, you could use it to uh, put them all to sleep. But I don't think it's as reliable in this version of the game compared to the Super Nintendo version. But you only need it there. Well, Bell of Silence. Guess what status that inflicts, viewers? If you say poison, I'm gonna hit you. Oh, I already have one? Maybe, oh, there it is. Okay, well, yeah, there you go. But we don't have, like, geomancers. 
to equip it, unfortunately. And by the way, even though Firaga, or any of Rydia's Tier 3 spells, is stronger than Bio, I wouldn't use them against trapdoors, because they're more expensive, and they take a little while to charge up. Unlike Bio, which is practically instant cast. Alright, and for defeating this one, well, a little treasure. None of the boxes have any treasure here, though. Actually, let me check my treasures. Yeah, we got them all! Hooray! In the Super Nintendo version, there's also a couple of those hidden treasures. Like the one I showed in the Tower of Babel. Where uh, you'll get a treasure like for opening a door or something or whatever. But it's not a door in this case because they're all trap doors here. But there's a couple more that I'll think about showing. But we'll see how all that goes. Yeah, might as well just wait for Rydia to, yeah, to cast, what was that, uh, Ifrit there. Let's see, we got a Vampire Fang. Yeah, Drain is pretty terrible in this game. I mean, you got the Drain Sword in the Bloodlands, but even there, it's not really that spectacular. But, uh, oh, right, so we made it to the final save point here. I'm just thinking if I want to use another cottage. I think so. Eh, maybe a tent would be good enough. Yeah, a tent would be good enough. We'll just go with that. Just get a little bit of MP back for Rydia, though she will want to be using quite a lot of it. But can we win the Dark Crystal of Darkness before Golbez does? Find out next time on Let's Play Final Fantasy IV Pixel. This is H.G. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day!